Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is the voice of Nebraska football, Greg Sharp. Greg, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Guys, it's my pleasure to be with you today. We've heard Memorial Stadium is the third largest city in all of Nebraska on game day. What will BYU players experience in that season opener environment? Well, I think they're going to enjoy themselves. It is a sea of red. I mean, everybody shows up wearing their red. It's an impressive sight. It's, and I've been in an awful lot of places around the country. It's one of the great cathedrals of college football. And I, I think they're going to really enjoy their experience. Oscar fans are very accommodating. They normally uh, salute and cheer the, uh, the other opposing teams as they come on off the field. So I think they're going to really enjoy the atmosphere they'll see against the Huskers. BYU fans expect the Cougars to go into Lincoln and compete and possibly win. Uh, what do Nebraska fans expect in game one under Mike Riley against BYU? A lot of uncertainty. I mean, there's so many different things when you change coaches, you different philosophies on both sides of the ball. So I, I think there's a lot of people that are nervous about this game. They have respect for BYU. They know this will be a very competitive game. They know that with a, Taysom, a healthy Taysom Hill at quarterback, that the Cougars are a very formidable opponent. The one thing that Nebraska fans are nervous about, they have won their last 29 season openers. They don't want to have it get spoiled on Saturday by BYU. So they're nervous, anxious, but certainly excited about the start of the year. How much does that season opening win streak matter to not just the fans, but to Nebraska football? Nebraska football has always been proud of their streaks, their consecutive sellout streak. They had a long-running consecutive bowl streak. Uh, so they love to talk streaks. So absolutely, it's been front and center that this will be a challenge. It'll be the toughest opener Nebraska's played in a dozen years. You'd have to go back to the start of the 2003 campaign for Nebraska when they actually played a conference game to open the year up with Oklahoma State. Uh, that would be the, the next time, the most recent time Nebraska's played a very formidable foe like BYU for Saturday. This isn't the first time you've called a BYU game. We learned that you called the uh... – Cotton Bowl for Kansas State uh, back in 97, uh, January 1st there. What was that experience like in that, you know, epic uh, game between BYU and Kansas State? It was a tremendous football game. Kansas State had a wide receiver by the name of Kevin Lockett. Oh, yeah. Who went up to, went up to catch a pass, but his foot came down just out of bounds on the back of the end zone. It would have won the game at the end. It was a great game. Back and forth, two really good football teams, tremendously coached by Bill Snyder and Lavelle Edwards. Love doing that. I actually called some BYU baseball this past year where the Oscars played BYU down in Peoria, Arizona back in February. So I've done some recent Cougar events. Greg Sharp, the voice of Nebraska football and part-time voice of BYU athletics as well. Is that fair, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so that's probably a bit of a stretch. But yeah. <laughs> You've been there for eight years calling Nebraska football, and in that span, Nine wins or more has become the regular for Nebraska. So when you look at what Mike Riley is expected to do in year one after Bo Pelini won nine games, what would be considered acceptable for Mike Riley in his first year in terms of wins? Yeah, and, and that's been a question we've banded around the state all offseason. And, and, and I think, you know, it, is it nine? A lot of people would say absolutely. That's, that's the standard. That's the bar that was set, and that was one of the reasons that that Bo Pliny's no longer here. He couldn't seem to kind of bust over the top of that and get to a, win a conference championship game. But you have others that say, well, you're changing systems. It's going to take a little bit of time to go through the transition. So it, it, I think it would depend on which fan you pull to the side and ask that question. In my mind, it's got to be kind of right around that nine-win range for you to kind of continue on, or, or it could certainly be viewed as a step backwards. So there's a little bit of – no, there's not a little. There's a lot of pressure on Mike Roddy and the staff. They know it. They've embraced it. They understand what they've inherited, which is a pretty good football team that has a, a consistent record of winning quite a few games each and every year. We're hearing different things related to Tommy Armstrong and the pro-style offense. Uh, can, he, can he be the guy right away in the pro-style offense that makes it work for Nebraska? Well, I think you'll, yeah, you'll definitely see pro-style offense, but I think you'll also still see some zone reads and some of those things that allow Tommy to use his mobility. Mike Riley has said really from day one when he got the job that he's not going to try to put a, a round peg into a square hole. He's going to mix and match his playbook to the talents that he has. And he has. He's inherited a group of quarterbacks who all run pretty well. So he's going to put some, some parts of that into his playbook. He does love to throw the football. And Tommy's, a, Tommy's got a very good arm. It needs to be more accurate than it's been his first two years in, in Lincoln. But I think he certainly can fit the system that Mike Riley wants to run. And you know, but we'll certainly start getting those answers beginning on Saturday. We talked to Coach Riley yesterday and asked him what he's most secure or confident with 
in terms of personnel on this year's Nebraska football team. And he said without hesitation, the lines, both the offensive and the defensive lines. How do you see the strength of this Nebraska team? Well, there's no question that offensive front's really good. It's it's a solid four. There's two tackles in the middle in Malik Collins and Vincent Valentine, particularly Collins, who's looked at as a first round draft pick in the NFL. Those are those maybe the two best football players on this team. The offensive line, they really like the depth. It took them a while to identify the five that they're gonna trot out there on Saturday, but they like the depth. I'm a little nervous that those that group hasn't worked together very long. And so how how quickly do they cohese and how quickly do they understand each other and the communication that you have on that group up front? I think by mid to late season, that offensive line can be a real strength of this team. But I don't think there's any question. The defensive front is the key to Nebraska. And, and I think really one of the keys to this game. How can BYU, with their offensive front, can they contain and block that front for Nebraska? Where do you see some vulnerability? Well, I think the secondary's got some questions. I think the linebacking core is very inexperienced for Nebraska. That's why that defensive front is so key. Those two areas for Nebraska. And, and Nebraska, which has been spoiled the last seven or eight years with knowing exactly who their top tailback is, they don't know. And then they've got four or five guys that they may rotate throughout the game on Saturday. Uh, that makes me queasy. I would rather know that I've got one guy I can count on when I've got to get four or five yards here or there to keep a series alive, to run clock, whatever it may be. So, to me, they need to figure out in these first couple of games who that, uh, who that IBAC is going to be. Greg, I'm guessing at some point in your game preparation you have come across the name Taysom Hill, the quarterback for BYU. What do you think of him, first of all, and what do Nebraska fans think about Taysom Hill and what he's capable of? tremendous respect. I think he's one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the country, and all you have to do is go back and look at BYU's offense and the production, how it dropped off when he got hurt last year. And I think they were really set up to have a special season a year ago until he got hurt in game five. Uh, I think he's, you know, Mike Roddy's compared him to Jake Locker. I don't know that I, I don't know that I see that as much. I mean, who am I to tell that Mike Rowdy is a much, much Valley Hoot and veteran head coach? <laughs> but I just I don't know that I quite see as much of Locker. I think Taysom's even more of a threat to run the ball than Locker was at Washington. I think he's a tremendous player, and I think he's I think he's right outside that inner core of Heisman hopefuls as we start the season. I think he's probably in that next batch. What are a couple of maybe keys to victory or scenarios you've maybe played out in your mind of how you think the game goes uh, on Saturday? Well, I think which team gets a running game established. And I think, you know, with BYU and the injuries to the tailback spot for them, I think that's a bit of a concern. So which team can find some rhythm in the running game offensively? Defensively, who can avoid giving up big plays? And I think that could be a theme of this game because I think you're going to see some both ways. But who limits the big plays has a great chance to walk off the field with a win. How have Nebraska fans embraced Mike Riley, who really was a surprise? I, I'm, from what I am hearing, he was kind of an off-the-radar guy. So have, have they fully embraced him? If so, how? Well, I, you can't help but like the guy. He, he's really one of the nicest men that I've ever been around in college sports, and he's really ingratiated himself within the fan base. I mean, they like what they hear from him. They like the tone that he brings to it. I mean, in Nebraska football, if you have a demeanor that rivals a Tom Osborne, you've already kind of won the crowd over. And Mike Roddy does that. Now, he's undefeated at this point in time. So everybody everybody likes an undefeated coach. This so <laughs> how will that change? But, you know, he, he, he did, he, there's nothing you cannot like about him. I like the way he teaches. I think this coaching staff has been together quite a while. A lot of them were at Oregon State with him. Uh, so he brought almost that entire group. So they kind of hit the ground running because they know each other. They know what to expect of each other. And they know how to communicate kind of those, give me a look. I know I know what you mean by that look, and they do it. So there's just a lot to like about the continuity of the staff. And just you, you can't spend but two minutes with Mike Rodding and go, man, I really like that guy. So he's one over the fan base from that standpoint. BYU at Nebraska, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ABC National. We are talking with Greg Sharp, the voice of Nebraska football and baseball. Greg, great to talk to you. Thanks for the insight, and uh, have a good call on Saturday. Thank you, guys. Looking forward to seeing a lot of Cougar fans come to Lincoln. There should be a shade of blue there, that's for sure.